I present to introduce our keynote speaker, my colleague, Mike Aspey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm here tonight to introduce our keynote speaker who will lay out the choices that this election presents. But first, let's pause and look back. It was 1964, another daughter of the South captured the attention of the nation with her stirring testimony about the pains and struggles of blacks in this country. Her name was Fannie Lou Hamer, a sharecropper and a Mississippi Freedom Democrat from the small town of Ruleville, Mississippi. Now there may be some of you here who are too young to remember her. You need to know her. Her words at this convention 24 years ago, her struggle for poor blacks and poor whites, and her vision of a freer, braver, more prosperous America gave birth to the reforms that have made it possible for everyone to play a role in this party and for me to be able to stand here with you tonight. With tears streaming down her face, Ms. Hamer cried out at Atlantic City, is this America? Is this the land of the free? Is this the home of the brave? My answer tonight, as I believe hers would be, is yes. This is the land of the free. And yes, this is the home of the brave, where we all work together to keep our country safe for our children faithful to God, and filled with opportunities for all. Yes, because the hands that once picked cotton and the hands that baked bread and rock cradles are now the hands of men and women who run for president and governor and congress and mayor. These are the hands that create the great patchwork quilt that is our Democratic Party. Fannie Lou's appeal to the conscience of this nation is one of the reasons another daughter from the South will keynote this convention tonight, a convention that brings together, in the spirit of unity, a son of immigrants and a descendant of slaves. Fannie Lou was a prophet of freedom. Our speaker tonight can be aptly called a voice of the future, an eloquent voice who expresses the basic beliefs of our party and of our democracy. Her name? is Ann Richards. She grew, up, she grew up in a poor family. Her parents said that she could be anything that she wanted to be, and she has proven them right. She can command the crowd. She doesn't mince words. She tells it just like it is. Her message transcends race and gender. Her message reaches out to our elderly, to our family farmers and to our children. And even as she has climbed up the ladder of elective office, she has never looked down on the people that she serves. She is a unifier and a healer. But she's also a tough money manager. As treasurer of the state of Texas, she has balanced the books in the face of some tough times. And if you ask the folks from Texas, they'll tell you she has been tested. I predict that the name of this new woman of the South, this woman of Texas, will be added to the list of freedom-seeking, authentic heroes. Men and women with no time for narrow thinking, no time for self-pity, no time for cowardice, having time only for courage, for charity, and for change. Wondering only about the future and how to bring everybody along together toward our new vision. Change is here, Fannie Lou because it is a new Mississippi. It is a new South Fannie Lou. 
where everyone shares hopes about our children and about our country. Fannie Lou often said in speeches back home, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, Ann, Democrats all across this country are sick and tired of being sick and tired of a Republican Party that has written off the South. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired of a Republican Party with no vision of the common good. And so, Ann, after hearing you, and after this great Democratic convention, we will be energized and unified and strong and ready to work together to regain the White House in November. Tonight, tonight America is lucky. We're going to hear a new voice. We're going to get to know a rare and very special new political leader. America, meet Ann Richards. 